Hi, I'm Margaret and today I want to do a few things. Firstly is plant a bunch of bulbs underneath this linden tree. This is the spot where I planted some hostas a few weeks ago and now I'm ready to get the bulbs in the ground. After that, I want to put in the drip irrigation and I'm not actually hooking it up, but what I'm doing is I'm basically laying all the lines down so that it's ready to be hooked up in the spring and I don't have to fiddle with it. I'll just have to do one or two little connections and it's done. And then the last thing I'm hoping to get done is mulch this entire bed. I got a big old trailer full of mulch yesterday and I'm ready to go on that. I'm not sure whether I'll be able to do everything today, crossing my fingers, I hope I can, um, but otherwise this may be something that will go from one day to the next, we'll have to wait and see. So let's get started. So first things first, and that's leaf blowing. I'm going to blow all of these leaves out of the bed, but I'm not going to get rid of them. I'm actually going to set them aside because I am going to put them back afterwards. Oh, and by the way. I keep remembering things that I have to say. Um, one of the reasons that I'm blowing all these leaves away right now is actually because I need to see what I'm doing. And I can't really see where the hostas are or anything like that. I kind of want to have a clearer picture of what I'm doing in terms of where I'm planting the bulbs. So I want to clear out these leaves first, plant the bulbs, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> Okay, so these are the bulbs that I'm going to be planting. I'm going to plant the narcissus, the daffodils first. This is Actea, and I only have 10 bulbs. So what I initially I was thinking, well, I'll do two groups of five, but actually I'm thinking I might just do a three, a three, and a four instead. I have a couple of different varieties of muscari, and these are quite a bit smaller, and I'll do these in much larger groupings that are a little bit of a, a drift kind of thing through this area. I am going to save a few to do along our front walkway as well, sort of to tie in our front walkway with this area. And these guys here, the leucogem or the snowflakes, those as well. Um, I have, I believe, two packages of these, so I have 20 in total. Okay, now you can obviously use a shovel to get all these things in, no problem. But I prefer two different tools for this. And for the larger bulbs, the Narcissus, I'll be using this guy here. It is a little tough going because there are gonna be roots in here. They're not too bad. They're not as bad as they could be, so. Um, but there's also rocks, which we have rocks everywhere. So sometimes I have to use a shovel even when I'm using the uh, drill. And so I'm going to do this now. I'm going to do this first and then I will show you the tools that I use for the um, grape hyacinths after because it's a different one than this. I'm not going to be digging. I have a hundred teeny tiny grape hyacinth bulbs. I'm not going to be digging with this and I'm not going to be using a shovel either. I could do just kind of a hole with a shovel and fill it in, but I prefer using this other tool instead, which I'll show you in a minute as soon as I get these in the ground. It's a not a bad idea to plant bulbs behind perennials that'll kind of grow and um, obscure the foliage as it's, they're dying back after they bloom. So here I have a hosta and I don't always do this. It's kind of like if there's a perennial kind of close to the area where I want to plant the bulbs, I'll kind of try to do that. But it's one of those things. It's great if you can do it, but I don't stress out too much about it. So daffodils, I'm going to be doing a hole that's about six inches deep. I may hit roots, I may hit rocks, I may not be able to go down that deep. So I'll do what I can. Hopefully I don't have to get a shovel. And here we go. Now 
Now, I'm about this deep, which maybe is about five inches deep, and I've definitely hit something, but you know what? It's fine. You have to be kind of careful when you're doing things like this because if you hit a rock or a root, it can really hurt your hand. This is not a very um, powerful drill. So I set my torque to 20 on this and it's fine. But other drills that are more powerful, I would probably half the torque on it. And because what'll happen is when you do hit something, it's like this. And like right here, I can't go anymore. There, I probably hit a root. So that's okay. And I'm gonna put one right in front here. There, done. I have a bunch of bulbs that look like this. So it's a main bulb and then there's two little offshoots. I'm gonna take the offshoots off and just plant those separately, just kind of around here. Oh, this one's really short. These are were probably about six inches, but this one is probably more like four. You know what, for this, I am gonna get the shovel and see if I can go just a tiny bit deeper. I think I got a little tiny bit deeper on that. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, there was a big root in here. There you go. Now I'm just going to cover that up. Oh, I have something coming up here. I have, I think I have a bulb coming up. Oh, that shouldn't be happening. So I'll take these little tiny offshoots here and I'll also plant them in here. I'm not gonna worry about getting these that as deep, I don't think. So let's go off to our next spot. Okay, pull up the weed. So here's another spot. There's a hosta right here. There's some pulmonary on this side. So I'm just gonna put it right here. And I am just gonna use the shovel for this. Like I said, too many tree roots. Even with the shovel, it looks like I'm hitting something and I'm only, I'm about this down, maybe four inches. So let me move over a little bit. Oh, now I'm even less. This is just a lot more difficult than it should be. Oh, it's a rock. I can feel. So when you hear that, you know, you've hit a rock. Let me move a little bit back. I may just, if I want to plant it here, I may just be stuck with going three inches down or four inches down. Let's go here. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to be stuck with whatever this is. Not exactly six inches, but not too bad either. I think it should be fine. Okay, so I have one bulb there. I'll do another one kind of here. Oh, this is like hard as a rock. Okay, I'm just gonna put this down here like that. There we go, we put three in there and I'll add a couple of those small little bulbits as well. Let's see if I can, the drill does any better over here. Probably not, but. For these little ones, I'll just see what I can do. Okay. I'm just gonna put one of these little guys in there. There we go. Okay, so this spot is done. Hopefully this will be better drilling than the last one.
So the daffodils are done. So now I'm doing the snowflakes and I have 10 bulbs of these. These do not have to go as deep. They only have to go four inches down. I might do five groupings of these. So I have 20, so that's four in each um, spot. I think that might be good. Now these grow to about 18 inches tall. So I'm thinking that I will be doing them kind of around the back here where the tree is and over there where the cedar is just kind of at the base here and maybe one back there where that rock is. That's what I'm thinking because they are quite tall at 18 inches and the foliage does last quite a long time compared to other spring bloomers. And I'm not certain if it looks good and then kind of declines rapidly or whether it's just in a slow state of decline after the bulbs bloom. So I guess we'll see. But I'm thinking if it's back there, behind other things. There's going to be hostas and other things in front of it. I'm hoping that that should be fine, even if the foliage doesn't look that great. So let's get planting those. Okay, so I have a hosta here. I think this one's called Big Daddy. It's going to get pretty big. So I'm going to try to put a clump, get rid of these weeds. I'm going to try to put a clump here and as I said I'm gonna do four of them so I'll have five groupings of four you know what's funny is that I would have thought that this area right beside the tree would be a lot more difficult to dig than the areas further out but not the case. It's actually easier, which is very strange. Of course, I say that now I hit a rock. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. And I'm not going to do it kind of in a one, two, three, four kind of thing. I'm going to do it in a little bit more of a drift kind of thing. So I have one, two, three, and then the fourth one I'm kind of going to put here. Okay, there we go for that. On to the next spot. I said I was going to keep them towards the back of the border the other four that I've already done the other four groupings are in such a way where I really think one would look really great here near the front of the border so I'm gonna do it I'm just gonna plant one grouping of the snowflakes here and I'll see how it does next year um, if I really don't like it with the foliage dying back for a really long period of time or something, if it bugs me, I can always move them, right? But I really think it would look really nice in this spot, so I'm going to give it a go. So now on to the muscari and first I'm going to be planting these. They're paradoxum and I've never grown this particular kind before. I only have 10 of these so I'm going to group them all together in one spot and that's going to be right in front of the rock where I just put the snowflakes off to kind of one side. Sort of in the middle and going off to the other side I'm going to put these and see how they do. Now these are very tiny bulbs. And let me show you here so these are pretty small and so for these 
I use one of my favorite bulb planting tools for smaller bulbs, this guy. And this is a dibber. And I love this thing. It is so much easier to plant these little guys. You're planting so many of them at a time. This is just so much faster. It's easier, especially when you're dealing with rocky soil and roots, because it kind of just slips right in between the roots. Usually if you hit a root or something, you can just kind of move over. There's no twisting and turning. You just kind of go in, you move it around a little bit, and then you just plop the bulb in easy peasy and you can get a lot of bulbs planted in a really short amount of time with this guy so let's get started with these ones okay so this is the rock i'm talking about and you can see off to the one side there i put the snowflakes so i'm thinking i will just sort of scatter these in kind of front of the rock in between the rock and where you see the hosta there kind of in that spot is what i'm thinking or maybe not. You know, I think I've changed my mind. Instead of doing it in front of the rock right there, I'm going to do it in front of the hosta, kind of in a drift right around here. I think that'll be better. So easy peasy. Push down, kind of move it around a little bit, and pop this guy in with the pointy end facing up. I'm probably planting these a little bit too far apart, but I'm hoping that they'll just naturalize. I'm going to put that one right there. Okay, and that's it. Last but not least, I have these guys. I have 100 of the Muscari Ocean Magic. I'm just going to get planting the same way as I did the other ones. I'm going to... I wasn't actually sure what I was going to do, whether I was just going to scatter them throughout this whole place um, or whether I was going to do them in like little drifts. And I think I'm going to do them in little drifts. So I'm going to speed this part up because you don't want to see me planting 100. Obviously, it didn't take long because those 10 took what? like three minutes to plant two minutes i don't know not long but still this will be a speedy one okay so i am done planting the bulbs and now i am going to do part one of how I keep the squirrels from digging up the bulbs. And I have done this for a few years now. Um, I didn't plant any tulips right now, but those are the ones that squirrels are notorious for digging up and squirreling away over the winter. And um, I did plant some in my other borders earlier this week and so far so good they're not touched yet like i said i've done this in the past with really good results um, and i'm going to do this even though i know the daffodils generally are not an issue but i'm not really sure about the other bulbs so i'm going to do this regardless so step one is this and i will give you a little bit of a close-up here what is this this is pelletized chicken manure, and the brand name here in Canada is Actisol. And what I do is I basically, after planting the bulbs, I just sprinkle some Actisol over each of the planting holes. That's step number one. Now, I'm not sure how this works. Um, the smell is kind of strong, so my guess is that it may obscure the delicious scent of those bulbs 
from the squirrels, from when you're planting the bulbs. I'm sure we don't smell it, but I'm sure the squirrels smell it, all the delicious bulbs underneath there. And this may be kind of a foil for the smell of the bulbs. And all they'll smell is this chicken manure and they will not think twice and just keep going on. So that's my guess. Anyhow, I don't really care how it works. I just care that it works. Okay, so here, for example, is one and I'll just sprinkle a bunch and this is fertilizer right so this is not only protecting from the squirrels but it's adding organic matter to the soil and nutrients to the soil so so much the better So the last step has to do with the leaves that I kind of set aside. So the key here is you don't want your planting area to be nice and tidy. You want it to be nice and messy. You want to kind of obscure the fact that there was any kind of disturbance in the area because squirrels are smart. They're going to look around and see leaves everywhere and mulch everywhere except in a few little spots and then they're going to go, hmm, what's under there one thing that i've been doing and that seems to really help a lot is basically just go back and spread leaves all over the area just sprinkle them down as if they flew in off the tree and sprinkle them in the areas that you've planted with bulbs and that kind of hides the fact that anything even happened in that area and hopefully the squirrels will just keep on walking because nothing even looks disturbed so that's what i'm doing next just there you go. Just kind of hide it. There you go. Nothing happened here. Keep on walking, Mr. Squirrel. the drip irrigation to the next video because this one is getting a little bit long but stay tuned for that thank you so much for joining me today i hope you're having an awesome time in your garden even though it's fall there's still lots of garden chores to do and this is actually the best time to plan for next year i love this time of year too because it's an awesome time to work outside as well i'm not a fan of the heat so thank you again and we will see you next time bye